Thank you, Stephanie, for that prelude this morning as we gather for worship. And welcome to worship with the Presbyterian Church of Western Springs. We are so very glad to have you with us this fourth Sunday of Advent as we continue our prog progress on the journey toward Christmas, toward the coming of Christ. During Advent, we are in a time of expectation and a time of waiting, and I wanted to share great news that the waiting is over for one family in our church, the Banovics. Uh, Raven, or Noah Raven Banovic was born earlier this week, um, and it's great news for Betty and Paul, who are grandparents once again, and for Scott and Leah as they welcome Noah Raven into their lives. And so we celebrate with them that this, like I say, this expectation uh, has um, brought about a wonderful blessing in their lives. And so prayers for them uh, as they begin this new journey together. We've had a lot of new life in our church, which has been very exciting. Uh, grandchildren and children being born in the past few weeks. And so uh, we celebrate with so many families and what an interesting time to have children right at Christmas. They would all be our, uh, our babies in the nativity. Well, they're probably too young for that. Well, friends, um, a couple things going on, obviously, in the life of the church right now. Uh, tonight, we'll have our longest night service. This is uh, a service on Zoom tonight, and the link is in the bulletin. It's also on our website uh, for you to access. And uh, I invite you to join us for this time. Our Stephen ministers will be involved as liturgists. We have wonderful music tonight. It is a, um, a service that I like to see as, as a breath of fresh air in the midst of the holiday season that can get a bit busy. This is a service that's a little bit quieter, uh, opportunities for reflection. Um, and especially if this time of year is difficult for you, uh, whether you are working through grief or loss, um, or for any reason you're having um, uh, the need to to come before God in a moment of pause and uh, and sit with the difficulty. I, I hope you'll come tonight. And you may not have experienced this service before. We've done it the last couple of years, and it's been very meaningful for those who attend. 7 p.m. tonight on Zoom. On Thursday is Christmas Eve, and Christmas Eve this year will be uh, on Facebook Live, just like our Sunday services. The service will be at 8 p.m. There'll be music a bit earlier than that, so feel free to log on a little early. If you don't get there early, you can always watch that again, but I wanted to make sure that folks have a chance to get logged on uh, and connected. You'll want to have a candle with you of some sort. You can come by church and pick up the little ones that we distributed, but if you have one at home, that's fine too. You'll also want to have uh, elements for communion, so some form of bread um, and uh, fruit of the vine, wine or juice, uh, ready with you as well for worship that night. And the bulletin will be up earlier in the day on Christmas Eve, and, uh, and we'll send an email in the morning, actually, when we send our regular weekly email, there'll be a link to it there. Um, speaking of the bulletin, there is a bulletin for worship today, and there is a link in the comments. Uh, it's also available on the on the website. Um, what's nice is there are some links in there and, and announcements about these different activities that are uh, that are happening, including after worship today, there will be a congregational meeting and the link is in the bulletin. It's also on the website. Um, but join us for the congregational meeting. The session has called this meeting to hear a report from our congregational nominating committee to elect officers for next year and then also uh, to vote on the session's recommendations of terms of call for uh, Lottie and me. And so join us on Zoom after worship. You can uh, click the link anytime um, after worship ends and, and uh, we'll take a little time for everyone to get there. So grab your coffee, we won't start uh, too fast. Um, and then we'll have a little time for fellowship after that. Sunday school is also happening after worship. It'll start at 1030. Uh, and so some folks I know may have to leave the congregational meeting to, to scoot over to, um, to Sunday school. I also wanted to let you know that um, I, I sent out an email earlier this week that Betty Toft, a longtime member of PCWS, has uh, has died uh, also early this past week. And um, we will continue to, to pray for uh, Betty's family and for all those who knew and loved her. I was reflecting recently on the 
uh, fact that about two years ago, we thought Betty was going to die. And I had asked for prayers at that time. And, um, and it's, it's amazing that two years later, um, uh, she she continued to to live and uh, and also in the last six months I, I mentioned that uh, the time that I spent with her it was remotely using FaceTime um, with the the hospital staff but in that time I saw much of the joy that uh, that I had heard uh, stories of and and um, and reflections on from Betty's life and so we do give thanks for for Betty's life and. Uh, and we give thanks that for her, she is reunited with her beloved Norman and um, and that for her pain is 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 over. Uh, we will find a way probably in the spring or summer when we are back together for us to um, to remember Norman and uh, and Betty here at PCWS. One other announcement on on uh, Christmas Day, we will uh, have a, a very informal worship service on Zoom. I invite you to join me for that and the others who will gather. You'll have opportunities to participate as a, as a reader if you want or not. You don't have to. It's going to be really a time, especially for those who, uh, who might just want to take a, a little breath from all the uh, activities of Christmas and to celebrate um, with others. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to it. It's 10 a.m. The link will be on the website as usual. Um, and it's also uh, the meeting ID is, is in the bulletin for this week. I wanna thank our musicians today, Laura Hepburn and uh, Tyler and Cheryl Allen and, uh, and Stephanie who are leading us in worship. And Walt Kovalik is our liturgist, Walt. I think we're ready to worship. Good morning and on this very sunny day, welcome to worship. Our opening sentences are from Psalm 89 verses one through four. We will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With our mouths, we will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. We declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to our servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Please join in singing verses one, four, and five of our opening hymn, People Look East. This morning we light the candles of hope, peace, and joy. These candles remind us that even in the midst of darkness, we have hope. Even in the midst of struggle, we follow a God who brings peace. And in all things, we look hard to be joyful. We 
light this fourth candle as a symbol of God's love for us and our love for one another. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We confess our sins before God, whose mercy is indeed everlasting, trusting and believing that when we confess, we will be met with forgiveness and love. Let us confess our sins before God first in silence and then joining our voices in prayer. Continuing in prayer, God of love, you desire that we would live in a world full of love, love of neighbors, love of God, and love of creation. While we clearly see all the places your love breaks in, we are also aware of the loveless corners of our lives, our hearts, and our world. Forgive us for the ways we build walls and set limits around love. Set us free from sin, so we might go out into the world as bearers of your love. Amen. Hear the words of the psalmist. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day for the darkness is as light to you. No darkness or sin can separate us from the love of God. Know that you are forgiven 
and be at peace. Friends, the good news of Jesus Christ is that he brings peace into our world. And then we have the gift of bringing that peace to others. I invite you, if you are online with us live today, to use the comments section to greet one another, but also to pass the peace of Christ to one another. If you are new or visiting with us, I encourage you to take a chance and use your fingers and type a little message in, and I know that you will be greeted with love by our community who is gathering remotely in this way. If you're watching later, I encourage you to pause the video and take a moment and pass peace with to someone else. Connect with them. Offer the peace of Christ. And so, friends, the peace of Christ be with you. I'm here with the nativity. If you'll remember last week, the shepherds heard the, the angels speak through the opened up sky proclaiming that Christ was coming. We have the shepherds here. And this week, Mary and Joseph are arriving to Bethlehem. Now, if you remember, they knocked on every door and they couldn't find a place to rest from their long journey or a place for Mary to give birth to baby Jesus until they knocked on one door and someone said, I don't have any room in my house, but I have some room in my barn and you're welcome to stay there. So that's where they went and that's where they rested as they waited for the birth of baby Jesus. In Sunday school, we'll get to talk even more about this story, this really exciting story as Christmas is just five days away. And speaking of Sunday school, I want to thank Connor Cushman for the beautiful artwork, the bulletin artwork that he did today and colored for us. Thank you, Connor, it looks lovely. Our scripture lesson this morning is from prophet Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 through chapter 62 verse 3. Listen for the word of God to us this day. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks this new day this day where we come together to worship, to hear your ancient words come alive and be new for us. I pray that your Holy Spirit would find for each of us a way to bring us closer to you through your word today. Amen. So I have a question for you. How do you choose your clothes in the morning? I imagine there are so many different answers among us. And in fact, I think I might have already made a few assumptions in the way that I framed my question. Someone among you is ready to jump back and say, in the morning, that's my favorite part of the night or even the day before deciding what I'm going to wear. And of course, there are those of you who are also wanting to correct my use of words, choose. 
I let chance choose for me whatever's next in the drawer or whatever's clean enough. Or maybe you're saying, well, I let my spouse choose or my parents or maybe even your children. I wonder how many parents have heard the words, you're going to wear that out? I think a lot of children have heard it, but parents too. I remember there was a trend for a bit where people would come into your home, stylists, right? And they would mark which clothes go with one another. I think there was even a TV sitcom with this where there were colored dots so that you knew which things went with which other things. I don't know whether anyone ever really did this or needed it. But regardless of when you choose what to wear, at some point, we do all make the decision. And I imagine that sometimes this is driven by our circumstances. If you're going out for a walk this morning, for instance, you're going to be a little bundled up. If you're here, that is. If you're going for a walk in Florida or Arizona, like some of you, for instance, you're going to be dressed a little bit differently. And if, like our friend Phyllis DeFrancisco, you intend to hit a hole in one like she did earlier this week in South Carolina, a hole in one. You're going to need to be dressed for the occasion. You're going to need to be dressed for what you're doing. And we think about what we'd wear because quite often what we wear matters to us for our comfort or perhaps for a statement that we're trying to make. For many people, their garments even speak politically. In parts of the world, certain clothing is mandated, especially for women. But even in our workplaces and our schools, women are absolutely treated differently when it comes to clothing. Clothing becomes a way we judge people and the way we make judgments about people. In fact, what we wear is perhaps the most obvious or visible statement about who we are whether we realize we're making a statement or not. Our identity is on display. And identity, human identity, and divine identity are at the core of Advent and at the core of our human dance with God. Identity, how God sees us and how we see ourselves and how we see God. These revelations, these understandings, they are the invitation of the incarnation. They are the invitation that God made to humanity when God expressed love beyond our comprehension in Jesus Christ. The invitation to know God. The invitation to be known by God. And the invitation to have our encounter with God transform us. In our text that Walt read from Isaiah this morning, the prophet writes that they are rejoicing because God has clothed them with the garments of salvation. God has covered them with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. If there ever is a day in most people's lives when what they will wear will matter more than any other, perhaps it's their wedding day. The hunt for the perfect dress, for the bride, for the mothers, for the attendants, suits for the men, and even all the guests deciding what to wear. Clothing matters. And in this text this morning, the imagery of clothing, the imagery of God clothing the prophet, of God clothing each one of us, moves us to ask the question, how would God clothe us? How would God clothe me and what would God have to say about me and what would it tell me about how God sees me? Friends, we spend a lot of time wondering how other people see us. But I wonder how often we wonder how God sees us. I wonder if we even wonder if God sees us. But the reality is this. God does see you. God knows you. 
And God's incarnation in Christ was so that you and I could see a glimpse more, a closer look at what it means to be children of this one who clothes us in garments of salvation. The one who covers you in robes of righteousness. The one who seeks to bring those things into our lives because God is the one who desires for us something new, a love, a grace, an endless expression of love beyond measure. This is what God desires for us, and it is what we are called to seek to be a part of in the world. We are being clothed by God because God is seeking to have us be God's love in the world. We are called to live in the world today as though it is the world of tomorrow the world that God intends it to be. In our text this morning, a text again that was written at a time of desolation, a time where people's lives were complicated by confusion and doubt, and even in the moments of hope, a realization that the road to normal, whatever that means, the road to normal was going to be a long and difficult one, if normal, could ever even return. And there's some bitterness among the people. Bitterness toward God, confusion toward God, and frustration. And I get it. Looking back in Isaiah's time, I get it. But I get it today, too. I get it today as I look around, as I look at the strife in our communities, as I look at the political discord in our country, as I look at the fatigue and exhaustion related to the pandemic, as I think about the suffering that those we love are experiencing, all of this comes together and I get it. And so how interesting it is that the message that comes through this prophet to these people and to us today is that God is clothing us as for a wedding. This marriage analogy is one throughout scripture, but this usage in this text, it's pretty unique. And it's important to consider what marriage meant in the ancient Near Eastern culture. Marriage ceremonies and, and marriage adornments, the clothing of marriage, but also all the celebratory trappings of a wedding, these were all designed around the goal of prolific fertility. Marriage was a promise not just of love, but of love manifesting itself in abundance. And so this message to God's people, clothing us like a beautiful couple, a glowing couple, is God's promise that even in the midst of our wandering, and even in the midst of our struggles, and even in the midst of our feelings of scarcity, even in the midst of, midst of that, abundance is coming. And in the middle of all this, again, God's claim on humanity, God's word to humanity, is that God will not rest. God will not forget God's people. God will not only make the land prosper, but God will make for them a crown of beauty. This is God's claim on God's people, a promise that God will do a new thing, a promise that God will bring change, a newborn baby a light in the midst of a struggling world. So I think at all times in our lives, but especially now, what we all need is a good look in the mirror. We need a look in the mirror to see that God has clothed us. God has clothed you. God has claimed you. God has called you God's own. And God has clothed you in the garments of salvation, covered you in the robe of righteousness. And in God's eyes, you are the most beautiful bride. You are the most handsome groom, the most worthy to wear a crown. 
This is your identity in which God clothes you and God loves you and God claims you. This is the identity into which you are called to approach the baby Jesus with an expectant heart. This is the idea into which you are called into this confusing time in which we live and remembering always, like the prophet writes, remembering always that God will not rest. And God will not be silent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, your love rushes forth like a river. It surrounds our lives and fills our lungs like the air we breathe. There's nowhere we can go to escape your love. There's nowhere that we can go that you have not already been. This Advent, we give you thanks for the gift of your son the gift of divine love made human and clothed in flesh, love incarnate. We ask that this love would be felt in all the hurting places of our lives and in the world. Particularly today, we pray for Betty Toft in her passing and those who loved her as they grieve. We pray for everyone who is sick or recovering and those who care for them. We pray for the lonely and the isolated those mourning lost traditions and opportunities to connect with people they love. God of love, for all of the glimmers that we get of you, we are so grateful. We thank you for new life and rejoice with grandparents Betty and Paul and new parents Scott and Leah upon the birth of little Noah Raven Banovic. And God, in this season of Advent, we all await with hope the birth of Christ. Christ, who is the source of all love and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. During our worship, we typically collect offering and the plates come forward with the ushers and we smile and we pass the plates. And I know that for many of you, the uh, tradition 
of that experience of passing the plates and placing an envelope is something that's important. And it's interesting the things that we that we might be missing about gathering. And I know for some people that ritual, that action is something that's missing. It's we're so used to paying bills by um, uh, electronic means that it feels something special and different about the way that we give. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that and also to acknowledge that as strange as it feels, we continue during our worship to have a part of our time set apart where we acknowledge that our giving is part of our worship. And so thank you for your continued financial support of our church. It has enabled us to continue with our programs and to uh, continue with our mission giving and even increased giving this this year. Thank you also to those who participate in our alternative giving fair. As uh, I mentioned last week, um, the, the response was wonderful and we were able to send some contributions that will be immediately used in this last week before Christmas. If you uh, would like, we would welcome your support continued of our uh, canned food and other non-perishable food drive for our friends at Second Baptist Church in LaGrange. The barrel is always out in front of the church. And I invite you to come by and, uh, and drop those items off. We take them every Monday. So tomorrow we'll be taking a delivery. Kathy Winterstrom and, and uh, Andy Anderson are faithful with those deliveries. Um, so I encourage you to bring those by. I also um, want to invite you and remind you to come on by the church and do a couple of things. One, um, if you have not put a sign up yet out in front, we've got signs for you from your family that you can put. And if you're out of town, I invite you to reach out to me. You can send me an email and we'll make a sign for you uh, and place it out under the Christmas tree. And then take some time and look at the other signs and see the greetings from um, from your friends, uh, from your church community, and uh, and it's wonderful. There are more than sixty five or so signs out there, and it is a great uh, visual image for you to see and for our community. I also invite you when you stop by to fill out one of the ornaments on the Advent tree. We're gonna keep that up through Epiphany uh, and it gives you a chance to reflect on these four words of uh, our Advent time, hope, peace, joy, and love. And where do you see God's hope? Where are you longing for peace? Where do you find joy? And what does Christ's love mean to you? And you can reflect on the little ornaments and tie them on the tree and spend a little time reading what others have written as well. So come on by, come at night and see the lights and spend a little time on your church campus. You are always welcome here. Let's join in singing our closing hymn that Laura will lead us in, verses 1, 6, and 7 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
our time of worship has come to a close, but our time together has not. I remind you that we have our congregational meeting and a time of fellowship starting after the postlude. The link is available again on the website, in the bulletin, and also on um, uh, in the chat there. And you can click anytime and there'll be a little waiting room where, where you'll be until we can get everyone into the room. So just be patient, grab a cup of coffee and join us for our time of fellowship. A reminder again about our longest night service tonight at 7 p.m. And then we'll be gathering on Thursday night on Christmas Eve at 8 p.m. Be sure to have a candle and we'll be serving communion again. So uh, you'll wanna have uh, bread, some form of bread and uh, fruit of the vine with you. Friends, uh, this season of Advent continues on our journey toward Bethlehem. In these next few days, my encouragement to you is that you reflect on this idea of who you are in the eyes of God and how you respond to God and how you'll respond on Thursday and on Friday when you welcome this newborn baby Jesus once again and anew. And so, friends, go out into the world. Go with the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And may you be filled with the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christ. Amen.